Picture this, our eight or nine month old toddler playing, eating, or maybe even fussing until they hear music. It could be coming from the TV, it could be coming from a car riding by, but their little bodies start to wiggle as soon as they hear a song they're familiar with. And it makes me wonder, how can someone so young respond to music and dance? So I got curious and read a Harvard Medical School article which provided this information. Music stimulates the reward centers, but dance activates the motor and sensory. Dance activates. I like that. So I read another article and a music instructor offered that music has the ability to heal. It can provide salvation and it stimulates. I'm like, wow, okay, I like that. I myself, I started dancing as a toddler. And my mom said my favorite song was Soul Man by Sam and Dave. And she said I would just wiggle through the house whenever that song came on. I don't remember those days, of course, but she used to remind me of them all the time. So as I grew older, as a teenager, and a very big fan of music and dance, I used to watch Solid Gold, Soul Train, Fame, and they became my instructors because I couldn't afford dance lessons. Well, I think I just aged myself. Well, anyway, so every opportunity I got, house party, school party, I made that my platform. And then as I grew older and was able to go to the club, I would beeline to the dance floor, plant myself in front of a speaker, and I would dance until the DJ turned the lights on and said, you ain't got to go home, but you got to get out of here. Some of y'all remember that too, don't y'all? So at the age of 25, I um, accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So to go to the club and dance out of the question, that was not how you portrayed your life for Christ. So I curved that appetite for many years. That desire to dance, I had to curve it. And then when I was in my 40s, I went to a church service in Milford, Delaware. And this brown skinned, curvy black woman was dancing. I was like, oh wow, what is that? My soul connected to her movement. I had to know what it was. And this brown, curvy woman, I introduced myself, I said, what are you doing? What is it called? And she said, liturgical. Her name was Vanessa. She and I became fast friends and she mentored my liturgical ministry. Most liturgical dancers are slender and some are classically trained. But when Vanessa and I showed up, no one even bothered to ask. Liturgical dance is also known as praise dance or worship dance or sacred dance. And is a form of movement usually performed in a church or worship service. I don't care where you are. Liturgical dance belongs where it belongs, right? So then we became good friends and we used to go dance in different places. And that was how I used to get my release, right? So on May 25th, 2020, um, George Floyd was murdered while handicapped by a Minneapolis police officer. That nine minutes and 29 seconds was repeated over and over and etched in the minds of people all over the world. And the movement of that time was Black Lives Matter. I was angry, hurt, disgusted, but I chose to dance. I grabbed my flags, I picked a big church in the center of Baltimore City, I planted a speaker in my headphones, and I danced, and I danced, and I danced until the weight of my flags, I couldn't hold it any longer. I danced off the grief I was feeling for the families who lost their loved ones. I danced off the blatant disparity seen and unseen. And I don't know how long I stayed out there, 
but my dancing left an impact. So I believe that movement in the form of dance is appropriate regardless the location. It should not just be contained within the church walls. It is an opportunity to get connected to the one who can make the change. And I, Ramona Pickett, 
sound-mindedly have decided to move in my power in the form of dance.